All right, my friends, in this video, we are playing devil's advocate. Oh yes, I have the uh, 13 inch MacBook Pro, 16 gigs, 512 gig uh, hard drive, M1 processor, blah, blah, blah. But we're gonna talk about maybe why this isn't the machine for you. Maybe why you don't want to get this one. Because that's also important because you need to realize the negatives to see if this is the right machine for you. So we're gonna talk about the five reasons, five reasons, yeah, that maybe you shouldn't buy one of the new Apple Silicon M1 computers. Coming up. Number one, and this is, you know, it's it depends on the person. If you're a person that goes through computers a lot, you buy a new computer, you don't want it to look like your old computer, you want it to look like a new computer. So the design of this thing, this is a design that's been around for, for quite a while and it hasn't had any upgrade in, I don't even know, five, six, seven years. So that can be a real issue for somebody because if you're dropping this kind of money and you know that probably the next reiteration, reiteration of this computer is gonna be redesigned right? It's, it's like going to buy a car and they're like, yeah, so it's going to look different next, next year. And that comes out in a few months. And you're like, Hmm, you better like this design because when you see the other one, you're going to be like, I wish I, I wish I would have got that one. And that's going to be the same here. So if you're someone that wants the newest one, but also wants everybody else to kind of realize that it's the newest one, that may, that may be a reason to kind of hold off because this looks no different than if you bought a 13 inch MacBook Pro four years ago. So that, that's number one. USB-C ports. Um, I love USB-C ports, but not everybody does. And that, that's, that's a big issue here is the fact that there is only two. So if you're a pro user, and I say pro user, cause I don't know if how much this is gonna affect the day-to-day -day casual user. But if you're a pro user for sure, you may have the need to run off power, to import off of an SD card, to have an external hard drive plugged in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Two ports may not be enough for you, especially if all the devices that you're trying to plug in are USB-C based. And that's kind of where everything is going. So you could easily have three, maybe four, um, devices that you need to plug into this computer and you just you just can't have it now that changes a little bit of some of your devices devices I can't talk devices are usb a based because you can get an adapter but again more and more devices that you and i go get nowadays are usb c so their cable is usb c so they require usb ports we've got two and one of them you have to remember has to be used for power so now we may only have a spare one so that can be that can be a big issue as well for a lot of people. So you really got to look at not only your needs right now, but your needs a year or two down the road with expansion on this. So four ports would have been would have been nice. We only get two. So that could be something that you'd really want to just kind of consider. I'm pretty sure whatever the next one that comes out of this machine will probably have four because that's been a pretty big complaint from a lot of people. You know, it's it's kind of first gen of of the m1 chip now i know it's not necessarily first gen but it is something to kind of be aware of and because it's the first you know there is going to be probably some uh hiccups or some headaches in the whole architecture of this not necessarily just the m1 chip but just how it's all kind of put together inside you know how that m1 chip actually works with the logic board or motherboard, how it actually works with the memory, how it works with the peripherals that are put in there. That that can be something. A lot of us don't like downloading an operating system or an update right when it's brought out because we know that, you know, within the first little while is the biggest chance that something could go wrong. So a lot of us may be a little more willing to try it when it comes out with version two. And my guess is in 2021, we're going to see a lot more version twos come out. Uh, and, and that could be really important for if you don't need this machine right now, for whatever reason, you got an existing computer that's holding you, it's doing everything it needs to be done, then you may want to wait for version two. Can't, can't be a bad thing. Number four is kind of a two-parter, kind of 
two pieces together. And a lot of us, and this is myself included with this, um, actually use Windows for certain pieces of software. And because of that, uh, right now, we're not seeing any Windows support. Again, this may come down the road, but if you are someone that requires Windows right now, you're buying this computer and you wanna take it home and install Bootcamp, not available. Parallels, Parallels is in beta right now, and it is um, flaky at best. Will it get better? Sure, probably when version two of the M1s come out. My, would be my guess, it'll be releasable, but it's early, it's really early in beta phases right now. So I tried it, literally took it off within a couple days um, because it just was doing more harm than good. So that that's, that's part one, if you need Windows, then this is, right now, this is not the machine for you. Number two is that you run Mac, Mac OS, but you rely very heavily on, let's say, plugins. So you're a photo editor or you're a video editor, and I'll use myself for instance. If I were to come here and open up my Final Cut, these plugins need to be updated, all these. So I've got a good chunk, and I've actually reached out to a lot of these uh, companies that are making them, and right now they're like, yeah, we're working on it. I appreciate that, I do. I appreciate that you're working on it, but the key is, is if I require these plugins, they don't work. It would literally put my workflow to a standstill, right? So that can be a real big issue as well. You know, there's some little terminal tricks that you can get Final Cut to kind of run in Rosetta emulator, but there's still, there's still apps. There's still plugins that don't function. So if you require any kind of plugins, for, like I said, for Photoshop or for Lightroom or for Final Cut or whatever it is that you're running, um, you really need to watch or reach out to the company that you have these plugins with to validate and verify that they actually work because I'd say 70% of the plugins that I have don't function at all. That, that's a hindrance. Right, that's a big hindrance. Luckily for me, luckily, luckily for me, I also have an iMac that is Intel based, and that's primarily where I do my editing. If this was my only machine, I'd uh, I'd be in trouble. Oh yes. So that's number four, and that's probably a big one. Last but not least, uh, upgradeability, because you know MacBooks in general never really had much for upgradeability, but you know we have to look at even the Mac Mini. And we have to look at future machines. So, you know, right now, and I'll use my, my iMac for instance, right now, um, that machine runs 64 gigs. When I bought that, and it's the Intel machine, when I bought it, I got it with eight gigs of RAM, and I actually upgraded it to 64 gigs. How much did that cost me? A couple hundred bucks, not too bad. But RAM, for instance, on the new one, because the, because the M1 chip is what's called a complete system on a chip, that means the processor, the graphics processor, the memory, everything is on that chip, which is why it's super fast. Problem is, is I can't be like, let's add some more memory. Nope, because it's in the chip. So whatever you buy is, is what you have forever. You can't upgrade it. And that's gonna include the Mac Mini. That's gonna include the iMac when it comes out. I can't see how they would make memory off to the side. I think it's all gonna be based on there. So I think, we are seeing or going to be seeing the end of user upgradable memory. So if you're a person that likes to add memory to your Mac down the road, I don't, I think the generation of iMacs right now, uh, the Mac mini, I believe right now, are the only two machines that you can still do that. And that can be a really big thing for a lot of us. It was for me and it was one of the reasons that I jumped on the actual Intel machine because I wanted to have all that extra RAM. So that's that's probably the big one. It's internal upgradability, right? So we're we're definitely going to see it uh, more so on the I'll say the old Intel machines. So five reasons, five reasons for you not to get or at least ponder. Play devil's advocate. This is really for you, right? Number one, uh, design. You you want something new and flashy. I get it, right? New and flashies can be appealing. That's that's important for some. Uh, number two, only two USB-C ports. Four would be better. There's no, there's no question about it. More is better. The more ports we can get, 
the better it is. There's no one that can argue that. Is it something that we necessarily need? Well, I don't know, right? You may not need it now, but you may need it a year from now, and, and then what? That's it, right? Uh, number three, uh, it's first gen, right? So first gen, is it working good? Sure, um, but is it working as good as it could be? Will we possibly see some problems? This machine's only been out for two months. There's a lot of things now that it, it may get better. There may be fixes coming up in the future, right? This, this, we'll see that within the first year of its life. Uh, we definitely probably won't see it now, but we are starting to see some people having some issues. So is it big? No, but something to always be concerned of. First, first generation is, for a lot of people, something that we have a tendency to want to stay away from, depending, right? Not, not me, of course, I have it right here. Uh, number four, compatibility, right? Compatibility, not just with Windows, that can be a big one for a lot of people, right? There's no bootcamp, Parallels is in beta phase. When is it gonna come out? Who knows? But even plugins are not, as of now, uh, a lot of them not supported with Apple Silicon. So if you have some plugins that you depend on, I'm sorry, my friends, it is, uh, it is not happening. You're, you're, you're not getting those to work. So you really need to do your homework and figure out if that's something that's uh, gonna completely hinder your workflow, right? That's, that can be, it would kill mine, 100%, it would kill mine. Um, and last one is upgradability. And we're talking mostly about things like RAM. Right, because it is built onto that SOC or system on a chip, um, it's impossible. I say that, and of course, Apple may release some voodoo magic that allows it to have memory off to the side. I don't know, but as of now, what you get is what it will be. And when the new iMacs come out and things like that, that was a huge perk of, like, say, let's say the 27 inch iMac. I could actually take it and easily add more memory to it. Go to my local computer store, get RAM, install, off to the races. Will I be able to do that on the new computers? Doubtful. I, I, I can't see how it's going to work. So that, that would be the last thing that I would really think about. The machine that you buy, that's it, right? That's, that's all. For, for a lot of you that actually watch this channel, you'll realize that I actually returned my 8 gig MacBook Pro within the return window. And, and ended up getting the 16 gig because I was like, ah, just in case. There's there's a lot of reasons. I'll spend that extra 200 US right now, just in case. So again, it really depends on your workflow and your usage. But there you go, guys. These are five, five, five reasons, five reasons why you shouldn't, or at least why you should really consider it. Because I get it. New computers, new technology is always appealing. It's always like, oh, I want something shiny and new. But it may be better to wait for shiny and new version two. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave you there. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, hit that little bell right there. And we'll see you guys next video. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go rest. Still not, still not feeling great. All right, guys, later.